Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR today, August 22nd, 2022. It's Monday morning. I'm the man they call me. It. It's the lovely Linda K. We're back to normal here. Linda, it's you and me on a Monday morning. Yes. We'll see if that's what happens next week. But for right now, <laughs> for this week, we are back to regularly scheduled programming. And hosts and content. All right. Well, Linda, I know we got a lot of big stuff to get into from over the weekend. But first off, who's taking care of us? What are we wearing? Well, two things, actually. One, of course, the great collar and elbow. Saw some collar and elbow being represented at uh, the show we'll get into on this past weekend. So if you want to save some extra cash while looking tremendous and feeling comfortable, no matter the weather, you can use promo code Linda K. That's L I N D A K A Y to save 10% off your order anytime at collar and elbow brand.com. And you know what else I saw being sported at this Come show in. we are about to get into? Pro Wrestling Insurance.com shirts. Nice. Yes. There we go. Saw that represented as well. So that is uh, supplemental coverage for anybody, not necessarily wrestlers or those associated with wrestling, but. Give it a whirl. Check it out. ProWrestlingInsurance.com as well. Perfect. All right. Well, glad to hear about it. Hey, Linda, I know that you're going to bring up what happened over the weekend. Was it, uh, you know, did nature, not the boy, but did nature, woo, cooperate with the big show last Saturday? Yes, it did. You know, there was some downpours, a little rain, but um, nothing as far as any threats of lightning. Therefore, the show went on in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. At I dare you to spell that. O-C-O-N-O-M-O-W-O-C, I believe. I, I'm pretty sure you're right. <laughs> that sure sounds like it. But <laughs> anybody outside of the greater Milwaukee area, Oconomowoc, what the hell is that? Yes, great town of Oconomowoc uh, at Wisconsin Brewing Company Park, host of the Lake Country Dock Hounds. What great hospitality everybody from the Dock Hounds organization uh, was to us, for us, with that beautiful field. Yeah, hosting the Ballpark Brawl, brought to you also by Great Lakes Championship Wrestling, of course. We had our wonderful roster, wonderful crew, Dave, Popcorn Night Hero in the house as well as the great Patriarch Lou Hero, and yep. of course, guest of honor, the Nature Boy. The Nature Boy! Woo! Rick Flair in the house. So, yeah, lots of fans there, there to see, obviously, see Rick Flair, meet Rick Flair, see our great GLCW show, and of course, to catch a great baseball game as well. So, I will say, this was huge, Meathead, because the meeting great took place before the show and we got to take a big group photo with rick flair before yeah i saw that yeah so that was just great just an honor to meet him i think all of us just great moment shaking rick flair's hand getting that moment um but yeah but we had an excellent show and you know the roles were reversed because the past couple of glcw shows we had iron mike kirkhoff from cbs 58 who was in ring wrestling while uh -huh. i was doing my normal uh ring announcing shtick Correct. but this time the roles were reversed me had this time we had iron mike kirkhoff on the mic as the ring announcer and it was linda k the tag team match at the ball yeah i saw that yeah i saw that uh you guys looked happy you looked good uh there was a gun show walking around in there too uh, yes. apparently i don't know if, if that uh, if the permits were clear but i know our good friend lance allen the gun show was uh uh on site as well yeah, Lance Allen, straight from, uh, well, I don't know if straight from Green Bay, but I know he was. Uh, but he was at the game the night before. Yeah. yeah. And then now at uh, the Dak Hounds game, and of course, supporting GLCW. Thank of you course. for uh, Lance Allen's support of wrestling overall as well. So great to see the gun show in the house as well. So run down the matches. What happened? How was your match? Well, it's great. We had uh, five matches to as a, a added bonus. I don't want to say pre-show, but an added bonus to the baseball game. And we had yeah. our GLCW heavyweight champion. Backwards Brown. A uh, big facing, fan, by the way. Yes, facing uh, Drew Hernandez. So um, Drew 
doing a lot of shows coming up from Chicago. So, you know, we mentioned, mentioned Chi Town. He gets some of those booze there when he's in Wisconsin. But I think yeah. overall, he's getting you know, a lot of love from from uh, the Wisconsin fans. Just being up here doing you know, a great job, of course, at the shows. Uh, we had some tag action. We had stars from OVW as well. Shotgun Tony Gunn. We had TW3 also. Uh, you know, from Green Bay, Wisconsin. I was Big fan awesome there as from, well. Yeah, yeah, GLCW as well. And uh, yeah, we just had some awesome matches. We had some rumbling on the field as well. When I say rumbling, I mean rolling. Um, some some shenanigans on the field as well. And uh, the main event was actually the women's tag match. It was uh, myself and a rising star at OVW, Tiffany Nieves, La Princesa. Ooh. As a tag team, it's again so wonderful. Uh, is that team. why you wrestled so you didn't have to announce it in the ring announcing? Oh. <laughs> no, I have to regularly say that. Um, in town at Louisville, La Princesa. Um, but yeah, so it was the two of us t- um, teaming us against uh, the one from Sierra, a great, great hometown favorite as well. As um, she was tagging with um, Crystal White from Chicago area, so it okay. was an interesting dynamic. It, it, it was fun. We we you know had our moments there in the ring and. I took the most bumps I think I ever took in a match because you know at Blizzard Ball I took a lot of a lot of heat to my leg, but as far as yeah. um, getting dumped onto the the ring a lot, that this was the first time. I mean, you know what? I even it's an awesome moment. This was never done to me before. I had a I don't know what the regular term for it is, but I know it as the Cesaro swing. So oh <laughs> that, okay, taking place for me and uh, yeah, I, I I felt it. I still feel it. Uh, not just that, but I was put in a torture rack and slammed i i had my throat against the bottom rope um yeah i i had a good beating on me but you know lo and behold we had a lot of action take place between the four of us i was able to tag in tiffany she had some some great stuff there with sierra and then at the very end i was tagged in back against crystal where i came in and i gotta think of a name for her but where others may know it as the orange punch or the superman punch it was the linda k punch i'm not sure but i delivered with the punch and the pin for the victory. The Linda KO punch. How about that? Ah, well, but then you hear KO and you I understand. Knockout. Noise. Yeah. I Linda know, but K yes. knockout. The yeah, the the Linda K knockout might not be bad. So <laughs> but it was it was awesome. And then the fans there were treated also to a great game to the Doc Hunts. And I will add this. So um a few of some a few of us were asked to stay to, you know, for baseball games, there's the in-between inning sure. entertainment. Sure, sure. Um well at one point in the bottom of the fifth inning, they wanted a few of the uh, the talent from uh the wrestling show in to play uh, some musical chairs on the field. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's the music that I would have playing. It was not the chicken dance music. I don't know even sure if there was. It was really we had a minute to do it, and it was myself, the GLC Tag Team Champions, the Express with Ryan Cross, Dr. Jeff Luxon, and we had Sandra. She was there managing the backwoods during the show between the four of us. So there's some shenanigans, I will say, from Ryan Cross. Um, looks like Dr. Jeff Luxon technically won, but um, he ended up on his butt, and I ended up stunning Ryan Cross right there on the field as well. So with the ladies wow. were really standing tall, so that was just a quick little thing. That was that was great. That was fun okay. to do as well. <laughs> oh, oh the chicken dance! I mean, that would have went over huge in a kind of walk. So maybe they played that in between another inning. Possibly. Hey, let's. Uh, that's, that sounds amazing. By the way, let's get into some quick news here before we uh, break down SmackDown and Rampage from Friday night as well. Uh, it looks like Jeff Jarrett is out of WWE. Uh, I don't believe it's of any particular volition. I think it looks like Jeff Jarrett has just let uh, the contract has expired. Now, you know, Jarrett was in and out since 2019. He served as a producer and a member of the creative team. He left the company during COVID-19 pandemic came back in his current role, which was a position of senior vice president of live events. So um, Jarrett, the last time we saw him actually was at SummerSlam as a special guest referee. And then we saw him the next night in the main event against Ric Flair and Andrade with his partner, Jay Lethal. So never say never with Jeff Jarrett. Uh, We don't know where he's going to pop up next. Yeah, I'm sure uh, we'll see him pop up somewhere soon. I mean, I would not take it or I would uh, I think we'd have to wait too long. Uh, Double J is a is a hot hot item. J E double F. J A double R E double T. All right, you ready to talk a little bit about SmackDown? SmackDown, see, live from Montreal, Quebec. This crowd, by the way, 
I mean, just give him the Oscar now. Give him the award. Probably the best crowd I've seen since the pandemic. This crowd oh. was banana. And I do that in honor of Pat Patterson. Uh, this crowd was banana all night long. They uh, they were amazing. The show starts off with Ronda Rousey uh, getting into the ring again, coming from the crowd. This time Ronda says, I paid my fan, my fine, more than enough. Pierce, get out there and uh, reinstate me. Reinstate me. Oh, you're going to send all these people? I'm going to hurt them. They sent the police, and the police handcuffed her, put her in a car with bars on the windows, and sent her off to jail. Mm. You know what I found interesting about this was she was like, are you going to come out or are you going to make me resort to violence? I'm I, I, not sure if I got that verbatim, but she right. the word violence, which we don't hear too often on uh, WWE programming. So mm, Action. It's just like, you know, people go to the hospital now instead of a medical facility, you know, things like that. So uh, Ronda Rousey being booked very strong. I'm not there yet with her on this. I'm getting there and I'm willing to give it time, but uh, it's not landing with me yet. The... The tough girl or the tough woman act that she's doing is not an act. I mean, she's a legit tough woman. I just, I need a little bit more. So, like I said, I I'm like willing it. to wait for it. I, I like it yeah. too. It's just not there yet for me. Mm. Def- I, I would say it's definitely I'm going to get there further for you. I think just seeing the different imagery of Rhonda in WWE, we know she is a legit badass, but just like the attire, yeah. we talked about that last time and, her just being her just, look looks great. I mean, uh, she's wearing different stuff. She looks so much better. But you know what? She's talking more smack, but not having even like having to say much. It's like she's coming in and just causing some some havoc, some ruckus. But yeah. um, I'm, I'm liking where this is going and what I'm seeing. Like I said, I need more time on it. Uh, the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament. It was going to be Sonya Deville and Natalia taking on the team of. The Keita Lions and Zoe Stark. Zoe Stark and the Keita Lions, nowhere to be found. They were injured due to Zoe Stark's injury. Toxic attraction. Linda Kay and Matthew Thomas have been banging the desk on this one for a while, <laughs> saying it is time for Toxic Attraction to move up. Not only did they move up, they defeat Natalia and Sonya Deville in advance in the tournament. Yeah, just a lot of strange elements of this. But, I mean, that's really bad, just, just strange in that. We didn't know, I mean, unless it was announced prior to, I don't know. It was a surprise to me uh, when I saw the Toxic Attraction um, Jumbotron come on. Because I was thinking, like, what? wait, what am I watching right now? Toxic. <laughs> I was really, yeah, I was really excited to see Nikita Lines and Zoe Stark come on. You know, I am a fan of NXT, and I, I, I wanted to see what they were going to present on the main show. You know, one, one of the main shows here with yeah. WWE. Um, but, hey, as you know... As you just said, me and Matthew talking about toxic attraction, possibly getting called up with the women's tag titles in the mix now. Um, yeah, they did a great job. I thought they got a great response. If whether people knew them or not, I think they they liked what they saw. It was again Montreal killed match. it, so oh, they yeah. got a huge response. But but here's another strange thing too: in that Natty and Sonia Deville, huge huge heel. Getting the more of a baby face from in this match, it was just interesting. So the dynamics were interesting well, in that regard. Remember Natalia from you know Calgary, well, no, Alberta, yeah, exactly, Canada. Exactly, exactly. So, but all the more reason that I felt that Natty and Sonia Deville would win, and instead they did not. So that was interesting. Again, another strange element in that regard. Just things I wasn't expecting happening. But what a great showing by Toxic Attraction. And so does this mean there? I mean, I know. Technically, talent can go back and forth. Here's the thing I caught odd. Um, Michael Cole and Pat McAfee mentioned the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions can go to any brand. If that's the case, if that's the case, why in the wide, wide world of sports do we have Women's Tag Team Champions on NXT? I mean, in theory... Austin Theory? No. Uh, <laughs> I was just about to say that. Uh, technically, though, just the women's championship can be brought on and defended on any show, too. Because the NXT, right? the NXT championships were meant for NXT. But now NXT talents have gone up to SmackDown and are going to vie for the quote-unquote women's championships that can go back and forth between any brand. Any brand is alluded to as in NXT. 
there's a chance the Toxic Attraction wins this tournament and then takes the belts down there and says they're the women's tag team champions. Then the other women's tag team champions, who I believe are uh, Caden Carter and mm-hmm. Katana um, Chance. Katana Chance, yeah. So do they unify those belts? Oh, no, not when you just bring this women's tag title back in the mix. Um, yeah, I guess when I think about it in that regard, I guess I was just still just taking it in. Like, hey, this is this is a, a, a shock. It, it's, it's all new and it's exciting. You know, yeah, so yeah. Exactly. We're in the honeymoon phase of it, so it's 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 okay. Uh, maximum male models. Uh, not only Max Dupree, <laughs> Maxine Dupree, <laughs> Massé, Mansoir. They're out in the ring and they get attacked by Hit Row. Not only does Hit Row run them out of the ring and run them out of the building, they put on a concert and start rapping right away. Mm-hmm. You know what? I love me some B Fab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I will say I so love Maximum Male Models, and it was great to see um, some physicality with Masse and Mansois. About time. time. Yeah, I know it wasn't much, but hey, we're getting some of that, and I like the dynamic of uh, the four of them. And, and in my mind, I was still thinking that Hit Row was a foursome, too, and I was like, oh my god, this is perfect. We got a four on four, but then I forgot. Right, <laughs> right. Like three summary now, but that's okay. That's we're, okay. We're, yeah. Before the five-way match for the number one contendership for the Intercontinental title opportunity at the Clash at the Castle, the honorary Oos, Sami Zayn, knocks on the door of the bloodline and Roman Reigns. The Usos having trouble at the border, so Sami gets one-on-one time with Roman Reigns. This little interaction here is opening up so much on SmackDown. What if Sami wins? Is Sami now the favorite on the bloodline? Is the Usos upset and jealous because Sammy's winning and getting Roman's attention? There are so many different angles that could be gone off of this. Absolutely, yeah. Definitely loved that interaction. Oh, Sammy's great. It, it, I mean, I was laughing, but just truly enjoying this moment between him and Roman Reigns. Uh, I, I was, like you said, you, at first... It was it, one-on-one time, and it, yeah. it was amazing. Even the phone call by Jay, how Roman told him to answer the phone. Was he dropping a deuce? I mean, what was going on? (laughs) To answer it. (laughs) What's what's going on there? Is he dropping a blood deuce? Oh, yeah, it's it's up for uh, open interpretation. Sure. If you will. Is he making a souffle? I mean, what the hell is he doing in the background? (laughs) Can you get that for (laughs) He's having a, a, a donut. I don't know. Uh, but that was just some great stuff there uh, with Sammy. And yeah, uh, Sammy, huge star of the show, obviously, his hometown. But just throughout the entire episode, we got a lot of Sammy. And we needed that. Or we and wanted it and got it. Not only did we want it, Montreal, Quebec wanted it. Sammy Zayn was the most over thing since sliced bread uh, on mm-hmm. that show on Friday. Let's talk about the five-way match. It was going to be... Madcap uh, Ross, Madcap Moss, Ricochet, <laughs> Happy Corbin, Sami Zayn, Sheamus. The winner will go on to clash at the castle to face Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. They continued to tease that Sami Zayn could win this match. You want to talk about a crowd on fire. Like I said, give him the Oscar now because that crowd would have went banana if he won. Even though he lost, he was over huge. The winner and number one contender it's going to be a slobber knocker at the Clash. Sheamus and Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, I mean, even the injury that would later bring Sammy back to the ring. Lots of lots of teasing there, especially for that hometown crowd. But um, all in all, getting Sheamus and Gunther, What a great match on SmackDown. What a great match. Oh, well, yes, that too. But getting that match at Clash at the Castle between... Seamus and Gunter. I mean, I'm yes. looking forward to that. And um, do you think it's going to be a, a chain link match, or like a catch as catch can? Ooh. It's not. It's going to be a slobber knocker. They're going to beat the piss out of each oh, other. Oh yeah, but I had to think about that. I was like, well, I mean, I, I, do you think it'd be hold for hold? No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, it started the match with Sami Zayn, and again, you know, later, still. Part of this episode, so I know we'll get to that, but that that was a, a great match and um, still, but you know, happy to see that outcome because I'm looking forward to the 
the intercontinental match that we have normally the we don't review or the live premium live event uh, yeah normally we don't bring up the side vignettes but we got to talk about this one the viking raiders gave the new day a viking funeral who is the woman painting their foreheads is that the return of sarah logan even think about that i was wondering whose hand that was painting there because she's married to, and i forget which one she's married to, to eric one of them. eric okay Didn't yeah think about that but that would be awesome welcome back sarah logan uh live morgan defeats shotzi um it, it's still going um i don't really have much to say on that i want to talk about the main uh interaction here drew mcintyre roman reigns uh they have a face-to-face in a volatile altercation roman reigns uh Ended up uh, having his honorary oose out there. Claymore kicked to uh, Sami Zayn from Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre standing tall. Is Drew McIntyre the man to dethrone Roman? I just don't see it happening yet. I, I'm still having hope and faith that it's uh, going to come down to Rock Roman at, at Mania. However, but does it have to be a belt for Rock no, and Roman? I, yeah, I was just saying. Um, Man, it's just no. As Drew was up. getting ready to go to the ring, he grabbed his gear, and underneath his gear was an hourglass. Yeah. Oh. TikTok. Speaking of backstage vignettes, I, I that was great with, with yes. Scarlet too. We got the that killer mentality, if you will. Again, killer cross. Even though it's carrying cross, it's carrying killer cross. He's not the carrying cross that we left on Raw that lost to Jeff Hardy and uh, Keith Lee. Yeah. One thing I will point out to your point, though, about Drew and Roman. Uh, Drew was saying, he's like, I see something different. I see it in your eyes or something of that sort. But, you know, he was there by himself. We did not have the wise man. He didn't have the Usos. There was a different Roman or um, just makes you think, like, this could change hands. This could. But then you mentioned kill or Karrion Cross. If he inserts himself into that match in some way. I know he's got his eyes set, seems more so on Drew, but it could be a 180 and really his eyes set on Roman. So interesting element. And I like that because you already have that, that wonder, that curiosity. Could, could you take the undisputed titles from Roman at the at yeah. Clash of the Castle? But now you have Karrion Cross in there as well. Just adding more adult more doubt god gosh more doubt and more <laughs> this steer to the whole thing there let's jump over to rampage and uh i know i've heard this you know from tony khan in interviews before but rampage was so loaded and they still added a bonus match that uh they because hook's match you know we'll get to that in a second was so short that they had an extra bonus match added into there. Again, they are shoving so much into 60 minutes. Let's start off with the show uh, kicking off, not the way they normally do. It was not a match. It started off with the ROH World Champion, Claudio Castagnoli, and the ROH Pure Champion, Wheeler Yuta of the Blackpool Combat Club, coming to the ring to begin the show. And Claudio is looking for a challenger for his ROH Championship. It's the natural, Dustin Rhodes. So I guess coming up on Dynamite, it's going to be Claudio and Dustin for the ROH Championship. Yeah, we'll have to wait next week for that, but a different spin to the usual, uh, you know, literally bell right into a match uh, to yep. kick off Rampage. But but we still got a huge pop from the crowd having Claudio come on out and um, the great setup there. And just another great story with Dustin coming out saying in 34 years, I you know, have not gotten a world championship. Let's give this one a try. And yeah, interesting to see for next week. This week. <laughs> this coming Wednesday. It's okay. Swerve in our glory. Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland, the champions. They took on private party, Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn. Uh, Swerve in our glory, the winners, and still AEW tag team champions in a very solid match. Showed respect at the end. Yes, we've been seeing a lot of that on AEW. Maybe it's the uh, Ring of Honor. I was the, uh... just about to say that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, I, and organically, I was just thinking like, oh, well, with ROH uh, in the house there. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. Uh, FTW we'll streamers soon. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe. FTW title match. It was Hook, the champion, taking on the reality, Zach Clayton. Which was longer, the match or his promo before it? The promo. <laughs> uh 
the kid doesn't work by the hour, does he? According to the Jim Ross, good old JR. He put uh, in, in the red room and forced Clayton to submit right away. Honestly, I believe they said it was about six seconds. Oh, I was going to say if it um, it was Aaliyah's her three seconds and is it point three point one seven? Um, maybe Something the six like seconds that. is the record, though, for AW that I'm aware of. Yeah, that we're aware of. But yeah, Hook literally slapped on Red Rum and he was done. The kid does not get paid by the hour. In the back, though, Cool Hand, Angela Parker, and Daddy Magic, Matt Menard of the Jericho Appreciation Society, uh, with words for Hook. It looks like, what if Hook's title was held by a sports entertainer? What if? You know, uh, I don't think those guys are going to have a chance against Hook. Uh, yeah, but I, uh, hey, that's putting... Somebody who Hook I'm speaking of, um, known just for his his physical work, his his hands, his takedowns, yeah. uh, his hip tosses, um, is against some sports entertainers. So there's something sports that could be, entertainers could, could happen there. It's a, little, a little magic, Daddy Magic. <laughs> They said they ran so quick on that hook match. Hey, we're going to give you another match because we have extra time to fill. Here comes the House of Black's Buddy Matthews with Julie Hart taking on Serpentico. The big story here is the Redeemer, Miro. He walked onto the ramp, and he was holding Malachi Black's mask. But he charged at Miro, but Miro mauled Buddy in the ring. Um, what happened to uh, what happened to Malachi Black? Did Miro get a hold of him? I would assume so. Otherwise, you would think he would have had a save there. Um, but the thing I so I'm thinking mostly, you know, just their wife references. Mm-hmm. Um, they should be seeing a s- certain somebody, I think, popping up on AEW sometime. Hey, soon. I'll be okay with that. Yeah. Penelope Ford took on Athena, and Athena undefeated in AEW. Uh, she maintains the momentum, defeats uh, Penelope Ford, who is returning. But after the match, the baddies jump in a ring and blindside Athena. And Jade Cargill and Stokely Hathaway walk onto the ramp. Uh, Jade took a sledgehammer and destroyed Athena's angel wings that she had on the stage that she made herself, you know, um, still more fuel to the fire. Absolutely. Um, I know there's some, you know, I know, uh, red velvet's out of injury. Statler, is she out of injury? Right? She's on no. injury again. She's I having her so. other knee worked on. Yeah. yeah. That's unfortunate. Um, but you're right. Um, this does add another element, the personal property. And it was Jericho mentioned a lot, saying she made it herself. She made herself um, getting destroyed there. But it's just interesting because right now it's three, roll up four if you count Stokely on one. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be something there to even the odds coming up soon. Hopefully, he's got more cards for other people. You know, because he's got the uh, the ass boys. Yes. Uh, main event time, AEW Trios title tournament quarterfinal match. It's the best friends, Chuck Taylor, Trent Peretta, and freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy, and they took on the Truth Busters, Ari Davari, Parker Boudreaux, and Slim J with Sunny Kiss. Uh, the team of the best friends advanced. That's Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy, and Trent Peretta, but they advanced because of the... Fr- uh, yes, Danhausen. Danhausen came and put a curse on Slim J. Slim J ends up taking the pinfall from Orange after he hit him with the, uh, uh, the Orange Crush or the Orange Punch or whatever he calls it, but best friends advance. Yeah, I, I saw that happening. But hey, Dan House just, uh, I know he's becoming, it. Uh, I dare I say, well, I was going to say a friend with the best friends, but an acquaintance, um, you know, with those he's made co- contact with ever since joining on. I mean, him and Hook, Hookhausen, you know, and now he's. Remember, he showed up in the best friends best matches friends. for a few times before mm-hmm, Hook. Mm-hmm. So he's still, yes, yes, friends. I love the grapefruit orange Cassidy. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. There was something I, I uh, wanted to point out over Rampage as well that that backstage promo with uh, Britt Baker and Jamie Hader and uh, yeah, Rebel, the, the the toxic references. Uh huh. Did you catch that? I did catch that. And you know, uh, Jamie Hader, excuse me, um, Tony Storm and uh, Thunder Rosa are going to have their title match at All Out. And you know, Britt Baker and Jamie Hader and you know Rebel kicked out who was interviewing. Get, get, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here. I'll handle this. You know that she might have a future in that. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. Rebel Reba. 
Reba, not not Reba, Rebel. Okay. All right. <laughs> that is the weekend. It was a lot, and I'm glad you guys stuck around with us again. We thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit us up on all the socials. What's your social again, Linda? Where are we hitting you up at? Well, for Twitter, it's at LindaK22. Instagram, it's at LindaK P W R. Yeah. And I'm at WCW Meathead, wherever you can find me. So for Linda K, for Matthew Thomas, I'm the man that called Meathead. Thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow morning. So long, everyone.